Hello y'all. Here we are at Bailey's Bar and Grill. I'm actually, uh, this is the parking lot to Bailey's Bar and Grill. If you look behind me, you'll see our stage that we have in the parking lot. And uh, got a few bases here. I'm in Germany. I'm at the, uh, the Warwick uh, compound, I guess you'd call it. I was about to say factory, but it's, it's more like a compound in the, in the good kind of compound way. Uh, out the windows I'm looking at the beautiful hills of Saxony and there are I think Czechoslovakia is right over there somewhere not too far and uh, and I'm here we call this room or at least I call it Jonas's practice room because when I first came here I don't know if you can see the floors but they're bubinga floors and all these guitars and amps and a grand piano and a stage and uh, and I heard Jonas playing in here and I said man you've got the best practice room of any place ever. And it's got a bar right here, which is now my territory, Bailey's Bar and Grill. We're shut down because it's, uh, it's a national holiday here in Germany. Uh, I came to town and, and uh, they declared a holiday and couldn't open any businesses. And so it's all, it's all good. But today, I have uh, my new signature models here. And uh, one thing that I think is really cool about this bass is this snakewood fingerboard. And uh, I keep getting asked about it, and why did you put a snakewood fingerboard in here? And it's just the sustain is so beautiful. It's harder than ebony, but it still sounds like wood. And you know at Warwick, we like wood. Even though I incorporated this stainless pick guard, which I've always wanted, and it's so cool since I had motorcycles, we all love stainless steel. But the, but the fingerboard, even on the low register, is so, oh, it sustains it. But anyway, I asked Marcus for a piece of this wood. It's just so amazing. When you just slightly wet it, you see the grain in it, and it makes a heck of a paddle. So I'm taking this home, and for all my students who don't practice, they get paddled with snake wood, which is probably kind of a, uh, a unique experience. It would be for me anyway. But today, let's talk about artificial harmonics. I get asked about it all the time, and it's kind of an advanced technique, um, uh, it's, uh, but it's easy to pick up. It's easy, it's easy to understand. If you understand first that these are natural harmonics. I refer to these, there's my open G string. And there is an octave, we, we, at the 12th fret we get the octave. And at the 7th fret we get a 5th. Then another octave roughly at the 5th fret. Then a 3rd and, and a 5th and so on up. And the same thing works this way in both directions. An artificial harmonic. Now, I first heard Jocko do it on uh, Birdland way back when, when, when that came out, and I didn't even know how he did it. So I developed a little bit of a different technique, not knowing how he did it. And that's a whole other funny story of uh, meeting him and then arguing over which technique was, uh, was better. But that's another story for another lesson. Um, I, it, whether you use your thumb or anything, what we've got to do to create artificial harmonics is touch the node and pluck the string with our right hand, which takes our left hand out of the picture. So what I first tell my students to practice is find that same G harmonic. But I've got to get it with this finger. So Jocko did it with his thumb, lightly touched it at the 12th fret and plucked with his other fingers. And the way I do it, I touch with my index finger and pluck with these two fingers, my uh, middle and ring. Jocko, great method, Steve, effective method, and the typical way. So if I, once I can do that, then all I have to do is just change the length of the string, which is what we do every time we fret a note. You know what I'm going to do? While you watch, I'm going to go to this great Helborg preamp, put it on mute, and just to make this a little more viewer friendly, and while I talk, I'm going to switch bases so you can see the frets, which I think will make it make it uh, a little more obvious. And I picked this bass out of all of these in here because, well, I like gold. 
and I'll turn it back on. Get the volume about the same. So I'm here at the 12th fret once again, and I'm plucking with my index finger. I'm sorry, plucking with my uh, middle and ring finger and touching the node with my index. And here I'm touching the node with my thumb and plucking with my index, a la Jocko. So if I'd come up to an A on the G string, what I do is move that point up two frets over the A. There's the natural note, harmonic, B flat, natural note, harmonic, B, C, C sharp. So you just got to make sure that you're 12 frets away. And you, anything you play now, whether it's a D major scale, now it sounds like this with artificial harmonics. Or like this. Or no matter what I play. Just like the harmonic series works like this, octave, fifth, octave, 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 fifth, the same thing works with these um, artificial harmonics. So if I go up to the A, I go to the 14th fret, and then I go up to where the fifth would be, the E. And I get the fifth there, and I get an octave at the 26th fret, if there was one. Same thing with the B flat. So what good is that? Well, when I go and build these cluster chords, allows me to add a D, G, and a C, the fifth, and the octave. I can even go further if I want. So it allows me to play harmonics in any key, and that's why I love artificial harmonics. It's just a, a real uh, it takes the range of a bass and it even expands it up. Some people use tapping to get that same effect, but I like, a, I like to use these artificial harmonics because they have a bell-like tone. And I'll switch back real quickly, maybe back to the fretless because we know I love that. I do, I do. So we end up... Don't you love snake wood? Now practice that or I'll come see you with this. <laughs> 